everybody, welcome to the video. So I'm breaking down the Monday Night Football showdown slate between the Washington football team and the Seattle Seahawks. And what should be a somewhat interesting game here, a 46 and a half point over under, but only a half a point spread. We do have some pretty fun fantasy names to talk about. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure you guys are as well. And if you do find this video helpful in any way possible, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. If you want to take that one step further, kind of fishing over, over on Patreon. I really recommend waiting until the first month if you do want to, but if you want to check it out, Cheat sheets, optimizers, ownership projections, data sheets, projections, all that fun stuff will be found down below. And last but not least, this video is sponsored by Prize Picks. I'm sure most of you know it is by now, but if you don't, it's Daily Fantasy Sports Simplified, just you versus the projections. There's no sharks, kind of fit the mess contest or salary cap restrictions or anything like that. Just you versus the props they offer each and every single day. And as of right now, if you new sign you over on Prize Picks, you can get a free money bonus. That's an instant deposit match up to a hundred dollars. When you use code CPEN and tell them I sent you. I think that'll be it for the plugs for the most part. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video. And as always, we'll start with the quarterback position. I will say both these guys do look pretty good on the slate. I think they're probably going to be the two highest zone players on the entire slate. Heineke's price point looks fantastic for a quarterback in what should be a somewhat close game. Offers you a little bit of rushing upside and hasn't been absolutely terrible for DFS purposes this year. Not saying he's an elite quarterback or anything, but he, I think he can get the job done, especially below $10,000. Russell Wilson, we'll start with him first. 11000 bucks hasn't been the greatest fantasy quarterback this year. Probably still not 100%, but he's got great options to get the ball to. Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf is insanely cheap on this slate compared to what you think he should be, and especially compared to Tyler Lockett, so he's going to be quite popular. So it's really not hard to stack those two together. In Washington versus quarterbacks and wide receivers have been absolutely awful this season. They're currently allowing the most fantasy points per game to the position and 29th DBA versus the pass, close to 300 passing yards and two and a half passing touchdowns per game. I think the question is if you want to play Russell Wilson, because you're going to play a lot of Russell Wilson. More than likely the highest home player on the entire slate. It's just a question of how much do you want to captain him. And personally, I think it's pretty likely one of these pass catching options is going to be the captain, optimal captain on this slate. So as much as I like Russell Wilson, I will have some Russell Wilson captain lines, maybe like 10 to 15%. But I don't think I'd go anything over that. I'd be rather be more exposed to guys like Metcalf or Lockett or just one of his pass catching options in the catching spot rather than Russell Wilson. And the same goes for Taylor Heineke here at 9800 bucks. I like the price point a lot for a quarterback. Seattle's defense has not been great this year. DVA-wise are 25th, but they're also allowing the 11 fewest points per game to fantasy quarterbacks, but I'm not too concerned about that. He does that for you a little bit of rushing upside. He's got Terry McLaurin to get the ball to. But outside of that, it kind of gets progressively worse. Yeah, J.D. McKissick and Antonio Gibson out of the backfield, but him and Terry McLaurin definitely going to be quite popular on this slate. I do like this price point quite a bit. I think he's a good flex play. Not going to have too much of him in the captain spot, but this game should be pretty back and forth, and hopefully he can put up a somewhat decent game, which I think he can versus Seattle. And if you're playing cash games, I'd more than likely just try to jam both these guys in the flex spot. So moving over to our lineup, like I said, if we're kind of gearing towards more of a cash game build, let's just plug in both quarterbacks in the flex spot when we move on from there. So Russell Wilson at $11,000, and then Taylor Heineke at 9800 bucks, and that would leave us around $7,500 left. For the remaining four spots, which is really not that bad. Moving on to the running back position, it gets a little bit messy here because both these backfields use multiple backs, especially the Seattle Seahawks. They're a bit more of a mess than the Washington football team is because it's mainly just two guys here, Antonio Gibson and J.D. McKissick. Both guys played around 50% of the snaps last week. We also saw Patterson get involved, but don't really think he's going to be too much of a factor in this game, but he's only $1,000. But starting with Gibson, 8600 bucks. Looking at his volume so far this season, he's gotten a lot of touches the past couple of weeks, which has been great. But 15 and a half carries per game, close to 60 rushing yards, about a half a rushing touchdown per game, and only 3.9 yards per carry. Also boasting a 7% target share and close to 2.5 targets per game. With Jaden McKissick, he is mainly the pass catching back here, which is very appealing on a slightly DraftKings because you do get a point per reception. He is seeing over 4.5 targets per game this year, nearly 40 receiving yards, nearly a 15% target share, and close to 4 catches. Both these guys are certainly in play, especially versus Seattle defense that has been awful versus running backs this year. Versus the run, they're 11th DVA, but they're also allowing the second most points per game to running backs. Seven catches, 72 receiving yards, and over 100 rushing yards per game. So I think both Gibson and J.D. McKissick are certainly going to be playable on this slate. I could see playing them in the captain spot because I definitely think there's a chance they could be off They're probably going to have to score touchdowns, which, again, can certainly happen versus this defense. And if you do play Taylor Heineke a lot, it's still not a bad correlation play to get a guy like either Antonio Gibson or J.D. McKissick in because he does throw the ball to his running backs quite often. So I think both these guys are certainly in play. I wish McKissick was a little bit cheaper, but with his pass catching upside, I guess I understand it. And then moving on to the Seahawks, if this was a fully healthy backfield besides Chris Carson, we'd have an absolute mess here because last week we saw four quarterbacks 
see a decent amount of snaps. Alex Collins saw around 40%, DJ Allen saw around 40%, and Travis Homer and Rashad Penny both saw about 10% of these snaps. But fortunately enough for us, and unfortunate for the guys that are hurt, but Travis Homer and Rashad Penny are both out. So it's basically the DJ Dallas and the Alex Collins show, which makes this backfield at least easier to digest for fantasy purposes because we know the ball it's more than likely going to one of those two guys. Alex Collins is more of the bruising back. DJ Dallas, we more so used in passing down, so I think he's a little bit more valuable. And he's around $1,000 cheaper than Alex Collins. Alex Collins will more than likely see more volume, but DJ Dallas can make up for that with receptions. And Washington's defense, like I said this year, has not been that great defensively. But they've definitely been a lot stiffer versus the run, considering they're 60 versus the run and allowing kind of mid-pack 16th points per game to the running back position and only 70 rushing yards in 38 receiving yards per game. So it's not like it's been very easy to run on these guys. It's definitely a lot easier to pass on these guys. That's why I'm kind of more enthralled with a passing attack for Seattle. I'd much rather play guys like Russell Wilson, DK Makeup, Tyler Lockett, or whoever it may be. The running back's kind of secondary for me. But I'm definitely going to try to get some exposure to him. I think both will be in play, and Alex Collins is probably the safer bet for volume. And moving on to wide receivers, we have several very solid plays here. We'll start with the Seattle Seahawks first, which is basically a two-man show of Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. You also see guys like Freddie Swain, D. Eskridge, and Penny Hart get some snaps, but for the most part, it's pretty much centralized around DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. And I gotta say, I love the price tag on DK Metcalf here. I realize he's had a couple of down games, so I don't think there's any reason that he should be like $1,400 cheaper than Tyler Lockett here. I mean, they're both fine plays. I love have exposure to both, but DK Metcalf at this price point is really hard to pass up, especially in this fantastic matchup versus Washington. Like, as long as Seattle tries to get DK Metcalf the ball here, he should absolutely smash the secondary. They're allowing the fourth most points per game to wide receivers, nearly 200 receiving yards per game, and their 29th DA versus the pass. So with him, Intel Lockett should have a field day here on the season. DK Metcalf, seven targets per game, nearly a touchdown per game, and close to a 27% target share. Tyler Lockett, in his own right, has had some solid numbers with close to seven targets per game, seven receiving yards, and close to a 26.5% target share. Also, nearly a 41% market share of the team's air yards. And if you're looking at the cheapies here, Freddie Swain, close to three targets per game. And the rest of these guys don't really have much to show for, but it is definitely a really good spot for the passing attack of Seattle. And moving on to the Washington football team, there's actually quite a few options here. Obviously, the main one's Terry McLaurin. He's the guy that's going to get the majority of the looks, and he's by far the best receiving option on this team, one of the better wide receivers in football. But just kind of breaking this down by snap counts from last week, Terry McLaurin at $10,600, saw close to 95% of the snaps. DeAndre Carter at $5,600, 75% of the snaps. Adam Humphreys. Only $2,800, saw 45% of the snaps. I do like that price point quite a bit on Humphreys. Not a big play guy, but does have a 10% target share this season. Cam Sims, he is $3,800, saw 18% of the snaps. Uh, Deami Brown, 13% of the snaps. He's only $200. And we also saw Dax here getting a few snaps as well. Although it sounds like Curtis Samuel is going to be back for this game, which kind of muddies the waters even more. It sounds like he'll be on a pitch count in addition to Logan Thomas, assuming he gets activated off the IR. So it's kind of a tough situation there. If Curtis Samuel was cheaper, I think he'd be more interesting. But as of right now, we don't know how much he's going to play. And it is going to mess up the targets a little bit for some of these guys. So for me, it's Terry McLaurin. And then you just kind of have to kind of spin the wheel and hope you get lucky with the rest of these receiving options on Washington. So then moving over to our lineup, there's two studs I'm just going to jam in here. It's going to be Terry McLaurin and DK Metcalf. But like I said, I love that price on DK Metcalf. And I think you could put either in the captain spot here. I think both these guys have a pretty strong chance of being the optimal captain on tonight's slate. But that price point, around $2,000 cheaper than Terry McLaurin. I'm going to plug in Metcalf in the captain spot, only $13,200. And then I'll plug in Terry in the flex spot. Now that's going to use up a lot of our salary. We have just under $3,000 remaining. But if we find a decent punt option, then we can probably afford like a kicker at the end. And I don't think that looks bad. And like I said, guys, I'm not trying to build you guys a lineup using all of your contests. I'm just talking through the video and we're seeing what fits as we go through it. And moving on to the tight ends, we'll start with Seattle here first, which is basically just Gerald Everett at 6200 bucks. Then you have Will Disley at $600. Both these guys are playable, but I don't think there should be this much of a pricing difference between Everett and Will Disley. Will Disley plays on over 50% of the snaps. We saw 51% last week. And both these guys are used in the passing game. Everett, I mean, more so than Will Disley, but he's seeing close to three and a half targets per game. Will Disley... Close to two. Like, I realize Everett's the more solid option here, but should he really be about $6,000 more expensive than Will Disley? I don't think so. I'd rather play Will Disley. I actually think he's going to be one of the more popular punt options here because he's on the field a good chunk of the time. He is using the passing game a little bit. He's got like 13 catches in the season, nothing too impressive, but at $600, we know how showdown sites go. Usually a tight end catches a touchdown for some reason, and Will Disley would not be surprised if that's the case tonight. So for $600, bucks, 
So when I get a cheap pass catching option with Russell Wilson, I do like that quite a bit. Everett is in play, but he's really expensive, which should make him low owned. But I mean, goodness, $6,200 for John Rabbit does feel a little bit gross. And then as far as the Washington football team goes, it sounds like Logan Thomas will be activated. It is reported that he'll be on a pitch count. So I'm not sure what a pitch count is going to look like for him. Could it be 50% of the snaps? Could be 20% of the snaps? I'm not really sure. Hopefully we get more clarification by the time game time starts. Because John Bates, if Logan Thomas is barely going to play, John Bates played on 99% of the snaps last week. Like he was on the field pretty much the entire game. He saw three targets, caught all three of them. Wasn't an impressive day. But he was dirt cheap that day on DraftKings. I think he was at bare minimum at $2,500. The problem is if Logan Thomas does play, he's clearly the better tight end. Like When Logan Thomas has played this season, I mean, the numbers haven't been amazing, but a 16% target share, 18% market share of the team, zero yards and three and a half targets per game. Like It's nothing crazy, but we just saw in the past, Logan Thomas has been a beast at tight end. So we'll have to see what the snap count's going to look like. Hopefully we can get some more clarification on that. And he's not even been activated yet. I'm assuming he does get activated, but... And the off chance he doesn't, John Bates at $3,600 will pretty much play the entire game. Then the fun part, talking defenses and kickers, you guys know my stance. I usually just fade defenses. Sometimes I go close to even on the field on defenses, but usually I'm underweight and I do not play any defenses in the captain spot. It just tends to not work out. There's some slates, and there was like a few slates in a row where they just kept being defensive touchdowns and they were pretty much close to being optimal. But if that doesn't happen, then defense is probably not going to be optimal, especially when both are close to $45,000, $5,000. So I don't really imagine myself playing too many of the defenses, too much of the defenses on this slate, and I will more than likely be decently underweight. As far as the kickers go, they have lower ceilings, but they have decent floors, which makes them pretty safe for cash games, to be honest. I think you can play them in tournaments. I'm typically even to the field on kickers. I'm not like a full-on fade kicker kind of guy. I don't play them in the captain spot, but I think they are fine flex plays. I like them better than the $3,000 range, but at $4,200 for Joey Sly and $4,000 for Jason Myers, I think we can still play them to a degree. This game should be pretty close. And I can see it where both these offenses can move the ball a little bit, but maybe they stall out because they haven't really been that great this season, so there could be a lot of field goals. I mean, there's nothing really to it, just a, I guess, a theory there. But I think the kickers are fine to play like around 20% in your lineups. You're building 150 lineups tonight, or if you're playing cash games, I think they're fine. It's like a last piece fit if you need a guy around $4,000. So then just trying to finish off this lineup. Like I said, Will Disley looks like one of the best value plays in the entire slate. So we're going to plug him in at $600. It's another pass catching option with Russell Wilson here. And that would leave you $4,800 left for the very last spot, which does give us some flexibility here. Logan Thomas, if he gets activated and they say he's going to play a large chunk of the game, you could play him at $4,800. But if he's barely going to play it, wouldn't feel great about it. You could play the Seahawks or Washington football team defense. You could throw in one of these kickers. You have Cam Sims, John Bates, Adam Humphreys. If you wanted to go maybe more balanced, you could take out Will Disley. Maybe throw in a guy like Humphreys. I know he's currently questionable, but then you could throw in Freddie Swain. That is certainly possible. But I'll let you guys use your imagination and put in whoever you want to play. But with that being said, I think that'll be it for the video. So I hope it was helpful. And if it was, make sure you would like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. If you want to take that one step further, an official member over on Patreon. You know where to find it. Link can be found down below. And don't forget this video was sponsored by Price Picks. Just you versus the projections. And as of right now, if you're new signing over there, you can get a free money bonus up to $100 when you use code CPEN and tell them I sent you. But I think it'll be it. I will stop reeling. I wish you guys the best of luck tonight and a great start to the week.